Hi, welcome to our video. It's a, we're going to show another technique for finding the least common multiple and greatest common factor. And uh, this is a technique I've seen called many different things. Um, I just think it's a pretty logical way of arranging your your information. Um, apparently, according to, I was watching a good video on YouTube by a, a teacher, Rebecca something on YouTube, and she called this the Indian method. Um, but I, I think it's just a logical way of listing out what's going on. So, for example, if you have 24, she starts with 24 and 18, right? And we want to find the, the least common multiple and greatest common factor. So, so what we do is we say what number, go, what factor goes into both of these? I see a 3. Well, 3 goes into 24 8 times, and 3 goes into 18 6 times. Is there a common factor that goes into to 8 and 6? Yes, 2. 2 goes into into 8 4 times, and 2 goes into to 6 3 times. Is there a factor that goes into 4 and 3? No. Um, they're relatively prime, right? There's no, no factors other than 1 that goes into both of these. So when this happens, you're done. And um, what we have um, is our least common multiple right here in the nice L shape. And what we have right here is what? A greatest common factor, 6. And let's talk about why this makes sense. Well, the GCF, the greatest common factor of 24 and 18, equals 6. Because what you're finding here, you found that 3 went into both numbers, and 2 went into both numbers. So therefore, 3 times 2 goes into both numbers. So that's the greatest common factor. And we knew there wasn't anything else because we tried to go further, but we couldn't. We reached to 4 and 3 and we're done. Now, why is this the least common multiple? Well, what's happening here is that you're saying what, what 24 and 18 really are, right? 18 is going to be equal to 3. Let me highlight this. 3 times 2, which is 6, times 3, which is 18. That's what 18 is. And what's 24? Well, that's equal to... 4 times 2, which is 8, times 3, which is 24. So when you find a least common multiple, what you're going to do is take all the numbers, the factors that make up each number, and multiply them. But not every single one. Just just each, each factor that goes into the numbers and multiply it the number of times, the maximum number of times it occurs. Okay, I think I, I botched that up. Let me say that again. The LCM of 24 and 18 is going to equal what? Well, it's going to equal 3 times 2 times 3. 3 times 2 times times 3. Right? Because that's what 18 is. And then it's going to equal that times not... Well, 4 times 2 times 3 is 24. But I already have that 2 and 3 right here. So we're just going to multiply it by 4 as well. So the LCM is just 3 squared. So that that factor occurred twice, so it's squared, that's the most it occurred, times 2, which occurs once, times 4. So all I did here was take these two 3's and combine them in one term, and I find my LCM. And I think what was what is visually nice about this model is the LCM actually forms an L shape. And the model is nice because we can expand this to as many numbers as we want. The Venn diagram, yes, you can use a Venn diagram, for, for more numbers, but they become pretty difficult to draw. So here, let's look at, um, let's build off of 24 and 18 and add a third number. Um, let's, let's say something prime, like 11, just to emphasize our point. So what do you do? Well, you find a number that goes into all three. Whoa. Well, is there anything? No. What do we do? Well, actually, I'm sorry. Let me do this. Now, I could have... Well, let, me, let me redraw this. Let's add two more numbers. Let's add um, 6 and then 11. That'll kind of clarify what's going on here. So now, there's not a factor that goes into all three numbers, right? Because 11 is prime, and, and the only factors of 11 are 1 in itself. So we're not done here, but we do bring the 11 down, right? We're not going to touch it. Uh, it's got a unique factor to it. Um, so the greatest common factor for all three numbers, all four numbers, is just going to be 1. There's nothing. They're relatively prime t 
to each other and as a group, but we can break these numbers down further to understand the least common multiple. So, so 2 goes into all these numbers. 2 goes into 24 12 times, and 18 9 times, and 6 3 times. So here, is there a number that goes into all three of these? Yes, 3 does. 3 goes into 12 4 times, into 9 3 times, and into 3 once. We still have our 11. Is there anything that goes into 4 and 3 and 1? No. Um, so now we're done. So here, you could say the greatest common factor, and this we already careful, is not 2 times 3, it's not 6, because 6 does not go into 11. This is the greatest common factor, right? We had 1 to begin with, and you couldn't go any further. So 2 times 3 is the greatest common factor of these three numbers only. So don't be careful with this model. You don't want to just circle this and say that's the greatest common factor. It's not. And what the least common multiple is going to be is this L shape still. It's always going to be that L shape. And I'll leave it to you to think about why that makes sense. But it's definitely going to be all of these because we need all those factors. So the least common multiple of all four numbers, all right, of 11 and 6 and 18 and 24, excuse me, has to have 11 in it, right? 11 has to be a factor of this product because, well, 11 is one of the numbers we're looking at. So it has to be in there. Does 1 have to be in there? Yes, but we're not going to write it because, well, 1 is the multiplicative identity. It doesn't affect anything. We have two 3's in here. So 3 squared times 4 times 2. And that will be the least common multiple. So as you pack more numbers onto this, um, don't stop when all the numbers don't share a common factor. Keep breaking it down as far as you can, and for any number that you can't keep dividing, just keep carrying it down throughout the process. Alright, hope that helped.